Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Well, I tell you what, it's been hot out there, hasn't it? My goodness. Thank the Lord for air conditioning. Amen. Woo, my goodness. It has been hot. It really has. I tell you what, just going out there in the morning, just walking out to the front and walking back, and it, you already get up a sweat. Humid out there. My goodness, it is hot. Anyway, I'm getting on with the message this morning. It is good to see each and every one of you here. Thank you. we got a great crowd this morning. I want to try to encourage you today. Anybody want some encouragement? Okay, well, good. Well, if you want some encouragement, I hope you've come to the right place because uh, we're all about some encouragement this morning, and I pray that the message will, will be a, a real blessing to your heart here today. I want to give you three reminders this morning, three reminders of why God always has your back. You know, I want us to understand this today, that uh, we have an awesome and wonderful God. Amen? Amen. And um, just as we were singing here uh, about His amazing grace, He is a great, wonderful, and a mighty, mighty, awesome, awesome God. And He always has our back. And you know, this is a crazy world that we're living in today. And um, a lot of times we, you know, we get all caught up in the things of the world and we can feel kind of alone, but I want you to know that, uh, that God loves you with an everlasting love, and um, I want just to try to, my best to try to encourage you a little bit today. So follow in your notes, if you will. First of all, the first reminder I want to give you is he is someone you can always count on. He is someone you can always, always count on. Look, if you will, at Psalms chapter 118. Verse 56, when hard pressed, I, what, cried out to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? When I was hard pressed, the Bible says, I cried out to the Lord. Let me say this to you, and I want you to understand this is a very, very powerful, powerful promise and a powerful truth. The gospel story should prove to you and I that God is our greatest fan that we'll ever have in life. Amen. He's our greatest fan that we'll ever have in life. You know, friends may come, friends may go, even families sometimes turn on each other, they bicker with one another, but you know something through thick or thin, it is a wonderful thing to know today that God is our greatest fan. And if he did nothing more for us this morning than to just show us how much he loved us by going to the cross and dying on the cross for our sins, folks, that's enough Amen. to prove to us here this morning how much God truly loves you and I. Just think about this, if you will. Think about who you really are today. I think about who I really am. And I mean who you really are today. Not who you portray that you are. Who you really are today, okay? All the little things about you. All the skeletons you have in your closet. All the baggage that you have. I mean... The rubber hits the road. Who are you today? All right, you got that picture? All right, so you know who you are today. I certainly know who I am today, and I want to tell you something. I am so happy that Jesus loved me enough that 2,000 years ago, he went to that cross, and he died on that cross for somebody like me. You know, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that he asked God the Father. He said, if it's possible, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. In other words, what he was saying was, you know, I know what's ahead of me. And listen, he knew that he was born to live on this earth for 33 years. He knew that he was born to die. He knew that he was born to go to an old rugged cross and to die on the cross for you and for me. And I believe that night when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying 
And the Bible says that he was praying in such fervency that he was sweating great drops of blood. Imagine praying to the point where your sweat was of great drops of blood. Folks, that's a fervent prayer. Amen. Amen. And when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying, he knew he could look ahead in time and he could see Pastor Branson Rogers. He could see you. He knew your name. He knew everything about you. He knew your strong suits. He knew your weaknesses. He knew the falls that you were going to make. He knew the strengths that you were going to have. He knew all of the betrayals in your life where you've promised God and I've promised God and we've betrayed him. We've gone back on those promises. All the times that we've said, Lord, I'm going to do better and we've fallen and we've fallen and we've fallen and he still said on that cross, I love you no matter what. That is an amazing thing for us to realize. He is your biggest fan today. Folks, I don't know where you're at today in life, but I want to tell you something. That is the greatest encouragement that anybody could ever share with you. He is a God. He is a God that you can always, always, always count on. The Bible says, when I was hard-pressed, I cried unto the Lord. And what did he do? He brought me into a spacious place. And verse 6 says, the Lord is with me. I will not. I refuse. Do you hear me? I refuse to be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? What can this world do to me? What can Satan do to me? What can anybody do to me? Listen, I want you to understand this morning, the Lord says, I want you not to be afraid because I will tell you this. People may turn their back on you. This world may turn their back on you. This world may think you're nothing. But let me tell you something. I think you're something. I think you're so important that I went to the cross and died on the cross for you. And I want to tell you, I am somebody you can always count on this morning. Folks, let me tell you something. Sometimes people think, hey, he's against me, but let me tell you something. He is always there for you. He's always there for me. And he's always there to pick us up when we fall down. He may not agree with all of our decisions, but I will tell you this. He's somebody that understands you. He understands you. He gets you because he made you. He knew you. He knew me when he was putting us together. He knew everything about us. He could look into the future. He knows all about you and me, and he still says, I'm going to make that person right there because I know that they're going to be a person that I'm going to love. When you're hard-pressed, folks, let me tell you, he's with you. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 38. What a great verse this is. What an encouraging verse this needs to be to us this morning. And I am convinced, are you convinced this morning? That nothing, nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Nothing. Nothing that you and I will ever do in our life. Nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Isn't that an amazing thing? Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears our for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. You, could, you couldn't lose Jesus if you tried. You are just as saved today as you'll ever be saved. Amen. When you fail, he's still with you. When you do great, he's still with you. Hey, he can't lose him. He says it's impossible. Once you come to know me as your Lord and Savior, I will never, did you hear me, he says, I will never, ever, ever, ever forsake you. Wow. Some of y'all looking at me like deer in the headlights this morning. Listen, he will never, ever leave you. No matter how many times you and I just disappoint him. He says, listen. I can't love you any more today than I've ever loved you. 
Do you understand, and I shared with the crowd on Wednesday nights, when, he, when God the Father looks on you and I, He looks at us through the blood of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And He sees you and I this morning as perfect in His sight. And He says, I love you so much that nothing, I'm not going to let anything separate me from you. Because you are so, so special to me. Isn't that a wonderful thing to realize? You know something? God's proven himself to so many people across this audience this morning. You know, I'm coming up on 12 years of being your pastor. It doesn't seem like I've been here that long. It might seem like that to some of you. But uh, I have seen God do so many miraculous miracles in this fellowship down through these 12 years. I mean, God has taken people from addictions. He's cured people from addictions. He has healed marriages. He has healed personal hurts and things in people's lives. Folks, he has done miracle after miracle after miracle in this congregation. People have come and they've said, Pastor, I can never be cured of this. I can never be free of this. This will never work. This will not work out. And God has said, listen, if I am for you, who can be against you? It doesn't make any difference what you face in life. I want you to understand, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And you can do all things, I said all things, through Christ that strengthens you. It doesn't make any difference what the world says, what anybody else says, and your family, your friends, it doesn't make any difference. If it's my will for you, and if you get a hold of my power, you will have victory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Folks, listen. Struggle after struggle in this congregation. Hey, listen. And fears. I've said this many times. Listen to me. It is impossible. It's impossible to have fear and worry in your heart and trust and have faith at the same time. It's impossible. If you're worrying about anything this morning, anything, if you are fearing anything in this world this morning, you are not trusting and having faith in God, period and amen. You cannot worry, you cannot fear and trust and have faith at the same time. Either he is God in your life or he's not. Why worry about the stinking things in this world? I don't care what they are. Why worry? Why fear when you are trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to take you to heaven, to be with you for all of eternity, and you can read a verse like what we just said, I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you. You are special in my sight. What can separate you from me? Why do we think? that we meet obstacles in our life that God cannot take care of. I've never seen so many people run when COVID hit. They were running like a bunch of scared rabbits. I'm not coming against people that have had COVID. I'm not coming against people that have maybe passed away because of COVID. But I will say this to you and me, and you listen. If, and I said this when we were going through COVID. If God wants past pastor to have COVID, I'm going to have COVID. Amen. If God wants this pastor to pass away because of COVID, guess what? I'm gone. And you know what? I believe that God can handle COVID. Amen. 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 Some people were calling me up, coming in here. Whoa, what's going on, pastor? Wait a minute, are you trying to tell me that COVID took God by surprise? Shazam! <laughs> Nothing takes God by surprise. You don't think he can handle that? You don't think he can handle your checkbook? You don't think he can handle your job? You don't think he can handle your marriage, your kids? Hey, you don't think he can handle your old car? 
your dishwasher, your television, your promotion. Didn't, he just, didn't we just say that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God? Do you, want God? do you think that God wants your best interest at heart and has your best interest at heart all the time? Do you believe that everything that comes your way in mind, whether we like it or not, has to be approved of God before it hits us? Yes. Nothing takes God by surprise. There's no chance. There's no luck involved. Everything that comes your way and comes my way comes and is filtered through the funnel of God. And everything that comes our way today, the Lord says, regardless of what it is, all things work together for the good of those that are called according to me. You and I may not think it's good, but you know what? We've got a pea brain. <laughs> and we don't know the end from the beginning. And I know and I trust my God enough to know that everything that comes my way, whether I understand it, whether I don't understand it, whether I think it's good, whether I think it's not good, I know and I have faith because he's proven to me how much he loves me that I'm going to trust him to know what's best for Pastor Branson Rogers. So I don't fear. I don't worry. I may worry for just a smidgen. But you know what? I get rid of that smidgen. You know why? Because he takes care of the smidgens. Amen. Amen. People come and say, well, pastor, you know, you don't know what day we live in. It ain't taking God by surprise. Well, pastor, you don't know about inflation. God does. Well, pastor, what if this, what if that? I think that my God is strong enough to fill in all the blanks. Amen. Amen. Listen, you can't worry and you can't fear and have trust and faith at the same time. Is God really capable, folks, of handling what's in your life? It's either a yes or it's not. I, Christians come sometimes and they say, well, pastor, well, 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 what if? Well, pastor, well, well, what if? Well, what if you just started believing him? Amen. Amen. Folks, get rid of the what ifs in your life. Jesus is a stated fact. You know? He never moves. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The miracles he's done in your life in the past, he could do again. The devil wants you and I to have amnesia this morning. He wants you and I to forget what God has done in the past. If Listen, the next time you don't think that God's got something in your life, you just sit down on your fanny and you start thinking about the things that God has done in your life. And at the top of your list, if you know him as Lord and Savior, the salvation of your soul needs to be number one. And then you start adding every other thing that God has done in your life since salvation. And I will tell you what, you'll get up and you will say, I think I can charge hell with a water pistol. I'm telling you what, God has been so great to me, Pastor, there ain't nothing that can stand between me and God. I told somebody yesterday, this man was sharing with me, sharing with me in tears. He said, Pastor, and I met him for the first time. He said, Pastor, he was a funeral attendant over in Tampa. Pastor, you would not believe where I've come from. I said, tell me your story. He said, I was a drug addict, Pastor. I was pumping up in my veins. I was using cocaine. He said, look at my teeth. You see how shiny they are? It's because I lost all my teeth through cocaine use. I didn't know what day it was most of the time. And on top of that, I was a drunk. I was running around. I was cheating on my wife. I was playing in a rock band. I was doing all these things. My life was hell. And somebody said to my wife one day, why don't you come to church? And she said to him, honey, I think we need to go to church. He said, what'd you say? Church? I ain't going to no church. 
she said, well, you better go. You're going to come with me, and I don't know what you threatened him with. It must have worked. (laughs) He went, and right away, his wife, his wife connected with the pastor because he was from Kentucky. Good old Southern boy. All right? Like some of y'all connect with me, and you Yankees are still trying. But listen, (laughs) she hit it off with the pastor, and then he started hitting off. He said, Pastor, it wasn't long, about six weeks, that I walked down that aisle and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. And pastor, you would not believe what Jesus has done in my life. I, hey, hey, I don't use cocaine anymore. I've already got the ultimate high in Jesus. I don't use alcohol anymore. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't, I don't, ruin other people's lives pastor I am a changed man because of Jesus Christ and every one of my friends think I'm nuts that I used to run with but I will tell you pastor this man was crying right in the middle of that of that funeral home he was crying he was saying pastor what I can't tell you I can't believe God's amazing grace in my life and I said man I love stories like that Boy, I do. Those things got me fired up. Those folks in that funeral service yesterday, boy, they got some TNT. I'll tell you, they really did. I was fired up. I was fired up before that because I love to hear stories about how great and gracious our God is. And to think that God loves me and you the way that we are. Knows everything about us and he still loves us. Folks, that is an amazing thing. And to know that God is an on-time God. He's never late. He has got your back. He's got my back at the right time. He may push you to the brink. He may push me to the brink. Hey, we may think that God is his attention's over in China somewhere, but no, He says, listen to me. I know when the sparrow falls. I know the hairs on your head or the lack thereof. I know everything about you. And let me tell you something. Hey, 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 I am always on time. I've never, ever been late, nor will I ever be late. So let that encourage your heart this morning. Can you smile for me this morning? Come on now. Get with it. We serve an awesome God. He's always on time. He's never late. We are valuable in his sight. Woo! About ready to have a Holy Ghost fit right up here this morning. Goodness gracious. Somebody walked out here the other day and said, what denomination are you? I said, I'm a Baptocostal. That's what I am. Whoa. So, pastor, when all hell's breaking loose, who are you going to call? Don't reach out and call Gary. He ain't coming. Amen? <laughs> 1-800-ASK-GARY. Listen, don't you ask Gary nothing. You better dial 1-800-JESUS. That's what you better do. Listen, Psalms 118, verses 79. Look what this says. The Lord is what? With me. He is my what? Helper. Did you get the first of that? The Lord is with who? You. You. Me. All right? He is my helper. I look in. What's that word? Triumph. Triumph. It doesn't say defeat. It says I look in triumph over my enemies. Listen. Jesus is always the victorious God. Always. Simple equation in math, because I didn't, I hardly passed general math. But listen, here's an equation I know. Me plus Jesus equals victory. Every single time. You know what? It says here in this verse, the Lord is with me. The Lord's with me. When's he with me? 24-7. He's with me in my victories. He's with me in my defeats. He's with me in every single moment of my day, 24-7, all the time. He is my helper. I look in triumph. I don't look to defeat. I don't look and say, I'm going to act like a defeated Christian. 
No, I'm going to act like that I am walking in the victory that Jesus has appropriated for me through the cross of Calvary. Quit, quit hanging your head down. Quit having those old, loathsome, molesome days, all right? Listen, I'm not making fun of you. I have my days too. But I will tell you this. Folks, I have never had any pleasure in sitting and being a bump on a rock. Amen? Amen. Listen, I don't have, I, I can't find any happiness in dead ends. I can't. There's no happiness in dead ends. Who wants to go and go down a road and it says dead end and get to the end of the road where the dead end is and stop your truck or stop your, your car and just sit there and have a picnic? <laughs> Boy, that's exciting, isn't it? But you know that's where a lot of Christians are parked today? You're parked in Satan's dead end parking. That's where you're at. And some of y'all have been there a long time. You don't know what it is to start your car up and go down the highway. You've been parked in the dead end parking for a long time because you're listening to Satan's garbage. He's told you how you can't win over this. You can't win over this. You can't win over this. He's told you how everybody don't like you. He's told you how everybody thinks that you'll amount to nothing. You've listened to his garbage. He's tore down your self-esteem, and you've believed every bit of it. It's time this morning that you start believing what Jesus thinks about you. Amen. 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 It doesn't make no difference what your family thinks about you. They may think you're a sap at the end of the family tree. It doesn't matter. Some of y'all will get that later on. Listen, that's pretty good. Hey, listen. They may not think nothing of you. Your friends may not think nothing of you. That's okay. I've been there too. Amen. I've had friends that, have diver that, have, that got away from me. They were stupid, but they left me. <laughs> they left me. I've had folks tell me along the way that I couldn't do anything. I had told folks tell me that I couldn't preach. Probably, probably some of y'all sitting here say, still can't. But that's okay. I'm trying my best. Have folks say, you'll never be a public speaker. You'll never do this. You'll never do this. You'll never do this. Hey, we got one or two things that we need to do in life. Either we're going to believe and we can't, or we're going to believe and we can. Amen. I choose to believe that I can. Amen. You know why I believe I can? I believe I can, not because I can, but I believe that me and him can. Amen. Now, is that good? Amen. You know how I know that? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Don't you walk around and say, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Oh, fuddy daddy. <laughs> Listen, don't you say you can't do nothing? If God says you could do it, get up and do it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we had two people say, Amen, Pastor. <laughs> Let me say that again. If God says, it's my will for you to do this, Get up and do it. There you go. Y'all need a little go-go juice? Listen. It says, look, who are you going to call in times of trouble? Who are you going to call when all hell's breaking loose in your, in your life? You know, I got a smart phone. I'm not a smart person, but I got a smart phone. I can't talk to Siri. I've never met her, but I will tell you something. I know one thing about Siri. She's a Yankee. And the reason I know that, it is impossible for me to talk to Siri and tell Siri what I want her to tell somebody else. I was doing it yesterday. I got this thing in my truck. When somebody messages me, I can push a button and say, Would well, you like to reply to this person? And I said, yes. What would you like to say to this person? I say it. And then they repeat it. And I mean, I says, all wrong. Would you like to send it? No. Would you like to repeat the message? Yes. I'm going over Courtney Campbell. So I repeat the message. They repeat it to me. Do you think it's right? No. Would you like to send it? 
no. Why? You got it wrong, dummy. Would you like to try again? Yes. So I try it again. You think she got it right? No. Finally, I, she said, what would you like me to do? I said, shut up. <laughs> She's dumb. I got a million dollar idea for somebody. I told the guy down at, and this ain't got nothing to do with the message. I don't even know where I'm on it. But listen, I was down there and I bought this phone, you know. Man's telling me all this stuff. I said, listen to me. Just, you, you just listen to me, all right? I got a million dollar idea for you. You want it? Probably multi-million. Y'all listen. And uh, if somebody takes this idea and runs with it, just tie 10% of the church. Okay, listen. <laughs> Why not when you buy a smartphone, they say, what part of the country are you from? <laughs> I am from North Carolina. I want a North Carolina Siri. I don't want a Siri from California. <laughs> and I sure as the world don't want one from New York. Listen, I want somebody from North Carolina that can understand this country boy. Do you get my drift? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a multi-million dollar idea. It really is. Y'all believe me? Sure. That's nothing against Yankees. Y'all can get you a New York Siri for all I care. <laughs> anyway. When all hell's breaking loose on your life, you need to reach out to Jesus. And where I was going with this smartphone thing is this. We all have favorites in our phone, don't we? You have favorites and then you have folks that you, you block. Listen. <laughs> so... So your favorites are people that you call on all the time. Where is Jesus on your phone? Is he your favorite? I mean, is he the one that you, that you reach out to first? He should be. Some of us don't even have him on our phone until we're in a mess, a big, big mess. We try everybody else. We call our family members. We call our friends. I need help. Jesus says, well, why didn't you ask me? Why am I way down here on the bottom of your favorites? Listen, who are you going to call when you're in trouble? Better call Jesus. You know a song that I love so much, and I'm not going to sing it, but it says, Jesus, Jesus, there is something about that name. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about that name. You know what? There is something about the name of Jesus. I'll tell you, I'd be having one of those days, and you could be having one of those days, but you know what? You just talk about Jesus. You think about Jesus. You just let your thoughts be just, just full of Jesus. And I'll tell you what, every cloud that you're facing in life is going to blow away. It is. It is. Folks, change your channel that you're listening to in life. Amen? Don't listen to 1 800 hell tunes. Listen to what Jesus has to say to you. Amen. I was having one of them days the other day, and I, boy, I tell you, I changed the channel in my truck real fast. I did. I got country music in my truck. I got old country music. I, not, I don't have that new stuff because I can't understand half of it. I, I got, you know, I got other things in my truck. I got good praise music in my truck, quartet stuff I like. The old devil was beating me up the other day, just giving me all kinds of thoughts, man, I got in my truck. And I said, doggone it, you're not going to win today. You know what I'm going to do, you rascal? I'm going to blast you out of here. I got some Bose speakers in my truck. Now, I got to go hear this ear right here worked on because I, I can't hear a thing out of my left ear. <clears throat> my wife's having a hard time with that right now because she says I have very select hearing. You know what? But I really do. She has to almost get up in my ear and say, hey! It's, it's full of fluid or something. I don't know. So anyway, I, I got to go get drained. But it has its benefits too. I won't go into that. But anyway, I said, you know what? I am not going to listen to this stuff from the devil no more. 
I got in my truck and I cranked it up. Amen. I was listening to it really loud because I can't hear out of one ear. And it, it's like boom, boom, out, you know. But I was booming out for Jesus. I was listening to some good stuff. I was putting the old devil on the run, you know. It's his desire, you know, it's his desire to turn your impossibilities to possibilities. Look again at verse 8 here. It says, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's better for me, it's better for us to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. Isn't that the case? It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. You can't trust this world. Do y'all know there's fake news out there? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, we can stay there for a while. But listen, says listen, when times of trouble, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take refuge in the Lord. Isn't that great? I'm going to shelter in his arms. I'm going to go the one that has never let me down, never will forsake me. You know what? I'm going to go to him. I'm going to take refuge in him. I'm not going to trust in what anything else, anybody else says or the philosophy of this crazy world, I'm going to trust in the one that has never, ever let me down. That's why people have a hard time with this preaching today. Some pastors don't know how to preach today because they think, whoa, wait a minute now. Somehow, some way, this, this Bible is, is getting a little old, you know. It's been around for a long time, and, you know, we kind of need to change things up a little bit in order to relate to the people of this world. Now that's a new brand of stupid right there. Why in the world would you want to change a successful recipe of something that has never been able to be improved on, that is still strong as strong today as a day it was pinned, still changes lives, still wins people to him, still convicts us when we need to be convicted, still strengthens us and encourages us the way it needs to, hasn't lost a thing. Why would you want to tinker with something like that? Amen. But somehow, the old devil comes to us and he says, wait a minute, I know that God's done all these things for you, but look what you're going through now. And he shows you all the stuff. You remember where Elisha was one day? You remember he was there with his servant? And remember he was serving the Lord and all of a sudden his servant came in and says, we got a problem. Yeah, what's the problem? Problem is, you won't believe all those chariots and all those armies over there on top of those mountains. We are surrounded by chariots and all the armies, and they're going to kill us in a matter of moments. Boy, Elisha said, wait, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let's see. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. What can separate me from the love of God? Nothing. Neither anything above, nothing below, nothing in between, nothing can separate me from the love of God. If he's for me, who can be against me? I'm going to take my refuge in Jesus. So you know what he did? He walked outside. Don't miss this. He walked outside and he looked. He saw the chariots. He saw the armies. But he also saw something else. He saw around all those chariots and all the army, he saw the Shekinah glory of an almighty God. Whoa. Man, when he saw that, he said, come on, buddy, let's do it. I ain't got nothing to worry about. I am covered with the Shekinah glory of my God. Let's get it on. Man, folks, if we could have that kind of spirit today. Listen, I'm telling you all the truth. I'm telling you something that's as old as grits. We need to get a hold of this, folks. I know this is a crazy world. I know this is a scary world. I know about Putin. I know about all them nuclear stuff. I know about the economy. I know about all this stuff. But listen, 
God's got it. And he's got you. He's got you. And what he wants you and I to see today is not the chariots, not the armies that are around us that encompass us, that make us so depressed and down and out. No. He says, lift up your eyes and see the Shekinah glory all around you. There is nothing that can separate you from me. Nothing. If they're going to get you, guess what? they got to come through me first. Amen. 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 Satan's got another thing on his hands if he thinks he's coming through God to get to this pastor. Amen. Amen. He can't do a stinking thing with me. You know that? He can't. I know my name is on the walls of hell. I know this church is on the walls of hell. I know it. Because we're being attacked. The people in this church, some of us here, are fighting hell by the inch. But you know what? I praise God for people I know in this church that are fighting hell by the inch or have fought hell by the inch in the past year and that have still said, it don't make no difference what I'm going through. My God has got this. And I'm going to stand. I'm going to be steadfast. No matter what, and just like that old wolf, he's going to huff, he's going to puff, he's going to try to blow my house down. But guess what? You keep on huffing, you keep on puffing, because you know what? When you give out of air, baby, I'm still standing. Do you see that? I ain't going nowhere. Do y'all get that? I am preaching my heart out this morning. Get with it. I'm excited. I done had two monsters and a fritter this morning. I'm ready to go. Some of y'all need to get some spiritual energizer juice. You need to get the, the blood of Jesus flowing through your veins. Amen. My goodness. I don't know about your Jesus, but mine raised from the dead on the third day. Yeah, he did. What was the last time you told Satan, say, come on, let's get it on? You know that's what you're telling him every day that you're living for Jesus? When you're honoring and glorifying the Lord, you say, hey, come on now, let's go. Let's rumble. <laughs> Got nothing to worry about. My goodness. Oh, pastor, is he really after me? Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. I thought this was going to be encouraging. It is encouraging. Because if he wasn't after you, you wouldn't amount to anything. You wouldn't be causing the devil any headaches. I'm glad he's after me. I'm glad he's after this church. But you know what else? The blood, the blood of the Lord is covering my heart. It's covering my soul. It's covering this house right here. Man, back in the days of Egypt, remember... When they put the blood covering on the little post of their building, when that death angel was coming by their house, guess what? That death angel couldn't come in. He had to pass by. Why? Because he saw the blood. <laughs> when he sees the blood in our life, buddy, he's got a boot scooting boogie. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we're a child of the king. Man, mm, that's good stuff. I got to move on. You know, I'm only on point one. My gosh, I got to get rolling this morning. I'm having way too much fun. You know, say, Pastor, you know, I don't like the situation that I'm in in life. I, I don't like, you know, sitting here. Well, get up. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? You know, if I'm, in a, if I'm sitting somewhere... You know, say I'm on an airplane, something like that, and, you know, and, and somebody's sneezing and everything around me. Somebody's coughing, hacking, cussing, whatever they're doing. And there's other seats available. And if I sit there and I say, stewardess, I ring the bell, stewardess, stewardess comes. And I said, ma'am, I got a problem. Problem, problem. Yes. What's your problem? Well, this person over here, they're coughing, they're drinking, they're drunk, they're cussing. I, I don't like my seat. Okay. She goes away. Push the button. Ma'am, yes, I got a problem. This, 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 this. Press it again. Ma'am, I got a problem. This, this, this. You know if it's a smart stewardess, you know what she's going to say? 
why don't you get up and, stay, and change your stinking seat? What a novel idea. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Me and Brian, we got season tickets to the, to the Rays. Got great seats, by the way. Right on, right on front row, right, right in right field. We can almost reach out and touch the person out here in right field. Got to take our gloves to the game because we shag, shag some baseballs out there. But listen, listen, we got seats over here and seats over here because nobody goes to the Rays games. So we got all these seats, unless they're playing the Yankees or the Red Sox and the place is packed. Listen, somebody's around us and they're causing problems. What do we do? We either sit there, Brian, you know what, I can't stand this person. Brian says, you know what, Pastor, I can't stand this person. Brian, you know what, I can't stand this person. Pastor, I can't stand this person. Why don't you get up and change your seat? That's where some of us need to do today. Why don't you get up and change your seat? Instead of sitting where Satan has assigned you to sit, get up and change your seat. And start sitting with the Jesus crowd. It's sitting in the blessings of Jesus, in the joy of Jesus. You know what I'm convinced of? Some Christians love to sit in the seats from hell. You do. We got some. How are you doing today? Well, hell. <laughs> and you know what you do? You know who they are. So you know what you do on Sundays? You don't ask them who, how they're doing. Or... There's some man the other day, I know, you were running from somebody. You went to the ladies' restroom by mistake. That's because you didn't want to hear their organ recital. What do you mean by an organ recital? Well, my neck has hanging better days. Well, my back's out today and my knee's breaking this, my toe's hurting and... You know, I, my finances are going crazy and uh, my electric bill's too high and... <laughs> Gosh. Listen, some people like to sit in those seats, and I just don't get it. Folks need to change your seat and understand God didn't create you to sit around in that seat like that from hell. He wants you to sit in a seat that's blessed and joyful. Amen? Amen. All right, point number two. Not only is he someone you can count on, he's also somebody always in your corner when you can't count on anybody else. He is always, always there. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in the things of this world. No matter what kind of mess that you and I are going through, nothing, and I mean nothing, changes the fact that Jesus loves you and he is squarely in your corner. Satan loves to get you and I on a deserted island. He does. That Tom Hanks movie where he was talking to that coconut. I turned that movie off, by the way, because it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. What was the name of it? Castaway. Castaway. What was that other idiot movie you made? Uh, what was the name of that thing? There you go. <laughs> I, I don't mean to come against any Forrest Gump fans or Tom Hanks fans. Oh, those movies were stupid. Listen... <laughs> But you know, pops is a lot for cherries. Listen, listen. Folks, there's some of us on Devil's Island today. And we're talking to coconuts. What was the name of that coconut, Brian? Who? Wilson. Yeah, he gave him a name. A volleyball. Whatever. Okay, coconut volleyball. Still, it was a dumb movie, okay? And some of y'all know it pretty good, by the way. I like John Wayne. You like a box of cherries. Listen, there's a big difference between you and me, I'm going to say. Listen, I, I picked the right sermon for the day, by the way. It was the volleyball. Listen. Lord, forgive me. I'm having way too much fun this morning. Listen. Folks, we're on this island, right? And we're, we're deserted. And we ain't got nothing left to talk to but a volleyball or a coconut. 
for a box of cherries. We got some issues. What? Box of chocolates. Okay, so what? <laughs> Just forget I ever said anything about either one of those movies, all right? Gosh almighty. I got to pick better illustrations. I thought that was good for a while. Where I'm going with this, if y'all will allow me to proceed, is sometimes we get on a private island. <laughs> and we don't even see the little guy come down. It's a bean. Listen. I got that one right. Listen. 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 Devil gets us on that deserted island. And folks, all he wants us to see is all the stuff that's bad around us. We can't see anything good. You know what? We're in a bad way. The devil puts blinders on our eyes. And he is good about saying to us that, you know, you're on a deserted island. There's nothing that can save you. You're facing circumstances and situations. There's nothing that can save you. You know, we're down and out. There's nothing that can save us. And maybe, maybe we're on our last, we're on our last little leg. And we don't have any hope this morning. I mean, you've come in here today and you're, let's be honest. You say, Pastor, if, if God doesn't come through in my life, I'm in a mess. I'm in a big, big mess. In fact, Pastor, I am facing something right now in my life that is so hard. It's the worst thing I've ever been through in my life. I'm about ready to be broken in a million pieces. You know, in baseball, when the pitcher gets in trouble, and it's the end of the game, and when the coach realizes that that pitcher is in trouble, and that coach knows we need to win this game, here's what he does. He walks out of the dugout, and if he wants a righty, he does like this. If he wants a lefty, he does like that. But what he's calling for is his closer. And don't lose me. He's calling for his closer. You know what a closer's role is in baseball? It's to usually pitch one inning. He is a specialist to do one thing. And that is to win the game, to close out the other team, to put an end to the threat, to just close it out right here, right now, bring in the best. You and I are in the dugout of life. You and I are facing hell by the inch. We look on the horizon of our life and all we see is chariots and armies. They're accompanying us, accompanying us all around us, all around. We see no way out. Gloom, doom, deserted island. People have left us that we thought were friends. What we thought was going to be good has turned out to be disaster. Everything is going down the tubes. So says Satan. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. He wouldn't know the truth because he's not ever had truth in him. And you and I are at our breaking point. Maybe about ready to end it all. Here's what we need to do. We're sitting on the bench. We're going to do one of two things. We're either going to let Satan win and keep sitting there, or we're going to say, you know what? You know what? Enough is enough. Enough's enough. We're going to come out of the bullpen. We're going to, excuse me, we're going to come out of the dugout, and here's what we're going to do. You know what we're doing? We're calling on our ace in the hole. 
We're calling on somebody that can close out and win that has never, ever, ever, nor will he ever, ever, ever lose a game. He's the all-star champion, undisputed champion of love and victory. Folks, we need to understand that God has got us. Some of us are riding in that dugout, and we've been there for so long that we just think this is how life's supposed to be. We've believed the devil's lies for so long. It's time that we say, enough is enough. I am coming out of this dugout, and when I do, I am giving a signal to my God, my Savior, my awesome God, my heavenly Father. Close it out. Bring me victory. Bring me out of this mess. And when you call on the mighty name of God, when I call on the mighty name of God, he hears us and responds every single time. And he always wins. And he always lifts our spirits, no matter what. He always does. As good as friends are, we need to understand that people in our life are just people. Folks, they will disappoint you. They disappoint me. Have you ever had friends that disappoint you? You ever had friends that disappoint you? Family members that disappoint you? Just because... People leave you hanging doesn't ever mean that God will. Amen. Quit looking for your solutions in other people and start looking to Him that has all the solutions. Amen? Amen. Number three says, He is always faithful to get you and I back on the right path. Look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 3. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness. Boy, when we say that's true, Amen. I know I've done a lot of foolish things in my life, and then are angry at the Lord. People do dumb things. They do foolish things, and then they have the audacity to try to blame it on God. We are where we are this morning. We are always where we are in life by our own choices. Not because God's put us there. We are there because of our own choices. Either foolish choices or wise choices. We have to live with those things. Don't ever think that God is mad at you. God has never been mad at you. He loves you today unconditionally. He loves you with an everlasting love. Have we done things that disappoint him? Yes. But he is never angry at you. To the point of saying, I am sick and tired of you. I'm casting you away. I'm tired of dealing with you. Do you understand? Never, ever, ever. He always says, listen, I love you and I understand you. There may be nobody else, even in your family, that gets you. But God gets you. And God gets me. When I fail, I say, God, there's people that are all on me because I failed. God, I've, I've taken a wrong turn and people are, are just down on me. You know what God says? Pastor, listen, I get you. Do you get that? I get you because I made you. I know who you are. I know your weaknesses. I know your tendencies. In fact, I knew you were going to fall before you fell. Guess what? I get you. And I'm never going to give up on you. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Take my hand. Let's go. God's desire is not to see us crash and burn, but he wants us to soar like eagles. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find strength. 
Where are you trusting this morning? Those that trust in the Lord, you will find strength. Be still and know that he is God. Stay there until you renew your strength. I said stay there until you renew your strength. Get your strength. Plug into him. He'll make you like the Energizer Bunny in no time at all. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. Wouldn't it be nice to walk and not faint? Wouldn't it be nice to run and not be weary? Wouldn't it be nice to soar on wings like eagles this morning? Amen. Amen. That's exactly what he wants. I can remember, and I close with this, I can remember that when my kids were growing up, I was much younger, and uh, I took them out in the field one day, and we had put together a kite, and I was showing the kids how to fly a kite. Well, it had been a while since I'd flew a kite. <laughs> so here I was with the kite, and I said, now what you need to do is you need to, you need to run, you know? Hold the thing up in the air, run, 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 and then let it go. At the right time, that thing will fly. Well, honestly, I ran. I pulled the kite. Kite must have been made in Taiwan or somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> but it got up a little ways and went. I was thinking to myself, I'm doing a really good job of teaching my kids how to fly a kite. And they're all standing there looking at me. I said, wait! So I ran a little faster. Kite got up there a little bit and went... And now my kids are really going... I said, hold on! We never give up in this family. We never get up. I went back to this kite and I said, dear, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, please, in the name of Jesus, let this kite fly. I can't be and have this image in front of my children. Lord, they're going to think I'm stupid. And Jesus says, that's all I was waiting for. I knew you couldn't fly that silly kite. <laughs> okay, come on, let's go. We got this. I had confidence in my heart. Watch this, kids. I ran a little faster. Thank God he answered on the third one because I ain't got nothing left in me. So I'm running like this. Sure enough, that kite got up there and I said, Jesus, 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 the sweetest name I know. That kite got up and up. Big old wind. Woo! Boy, that kite started flying. Hey, all my kids are going, Daddy, 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 I knew you were the best. Ha! <laughs> Where are you going with this one, Pastor? <laughs> listen, listen. We all know what it's like try to fly a kite our life and we get up a little ways and it goes <laughs> we've come here to the altar we said Lord I need to fly we get out of here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday whippee and then <laughs> here's what Satan says you're never going to be able to fly that kite. Who are you to think that you will ever amount to anything? Every time you try to get up with Jesus, you fail. You're fighting this, you're fighting this, you're fighting this, and all you do is defeat, 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 defeat. Here is the message for all of us today. Keep flying the kite. Do never, 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 never quit.
Amen? Amen. Because just the time that we think that we are not going to rise again, the Lord says, we start soaring like eagles. And then we look down at the ground and we say, you know what? I remember when I was down there walking. I remember when I was in that old dugout right there. And you know what? I sure am glad that I didn't quit. I sure am glad that you never left me, that you never forsake me. I am so glad that you never gave up on me. I am so glad that me and you we're a majority in every single situation that comes my way. There ain't nothing like soaring with Jesus. Amen. Shall we stand, please? Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Our Heavenly Father.